Hi folks and welcome to today's video which is a craft video and it's another video on flocking. So in a previous video we flocked this leg of Mio Pup. It wasn't a perfect result. That was mainly because we used glue that was exactly the same colour. Yeah, the adhesive if you put on first, it was the same colour as the plastic on Mio Pup's legs. So, so you couldn't see where you had put the glue. That's right. We're learning through doing and the thing is, I have looked on YouTube and I couldn't find any videos for flocking models. Uh, all of the flocking videos I could find was just of like doing the inside of boxes. Yes. Or oh, there were some some flocking for model railway sets, mm. but that's using quite sort of rough sort of flocking made of sawdust yeah. for doing the grass and stuff, so completely different. So really, we're going to have to just do a lot of experimenting and yeah. learn as we go along because there aren't really any videos for that sort of stuff other than I found one, didn't I? But that was from some really professional person and you had to pay. Yeah, you had to sort of pay, subscribe and watch it. But one thing we want to do is try out different colours of flock. Yeah, because you can get them mixed together. Mm. So we tried mixing the two flocks we had in already, which is this orange and this cream. And this is the colour it made. Really interesting. Mm, very interesting. We tried just mixing up the flock sort of roughly. Mm. And then we tried mixing the flock thoroughly. But in both cases, Similar result, really, wasn't We've it? We've got a similar result. Yeah. It's like the flock does naturally blend. Yeah, the, the fibres, when they fly through the air electrostatically, they sort of just mix up anyway. So we weren't sure if it would be sort of like a spotted sort of result or mm. a blended mm. result with a new colour. And it turned out to be a blended result with a new colour. Yeah. As you can see, this new colour it's really quite different to both the cream and the orange. It's like um, almost pinky peach, isn't it? Yeah, sort of peachy sort of, and it's a bit shaded as well, isn't it? Mm. Depending on how you look at it. So I found it really intriguing and decided to get some other colours of flock mm. and try and mix in sort of sandy colours and cream and browns, different shades of brown together. Yeah, experiment. So I've made some of these little button things out of polymer clay to cover with flock like this. So these are, these are test pieces, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah. To test out different yeah. combinations. Mm. This flock is one millimetre. Yeah, the fibres are one millimetre in length. And the colours, the new colours that I've got I mainly want one millimetre, but I've also got some two millimetre to try mm -hmm. and some four millimetre to try. So that's mm, going to be really interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. And as well as trying out these uh, colours on the little buttons I've made, uh -huh. Paul printed out this 3D printed cat head. You've got the file of Thingiverse. Yeah, it's done by an artist, whoever's done it. They've done quite a good job. Mm, I'll put a link in the description if you uh, would like to see that on Thingiverse. Mm -hmm. um, from this 3D print, I took a mould using the two-part silicon putty. Mm, it works well, that stuff, doesn't it? I used polymer clay. So you press that polymer clay into the purple mould. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with this one, I thought what I'll do is I'll cut it mm. into two... two, into two pieces yeah where the mouth would open so i can flock this part separately to this part and then glue it back together and see if you get a neater result i've also used a little bit of chalk colored chalk pastels around the nostrils and the edge of the mouth and 
when I flock it, I'm only going to put the glue up to the edge, so not put the glue over the chalk. So I just put the glue around these bits and then flock it. And that will be really interesting seeing the results. And I took another mould and this time I left the polymer clay in the purple mould while it baked in the oven so that when I pull the clay out there wasn't any distortion. And I'm going to try just using all flock on this, maybe trying to get a little bit of pink around the nose and see how that compares with the one that's got the chalk on and that has been cut in two pieces. So first I'm going to work with one millimetre block. That's all we've worked with up to now. And I'm going to mix three different colours. This sandy colour, a dark brown and cream. That's the colour it's made and obviously when it's flocked it will blend even more, won't it? Yeah. And this is the result and we're both really surprised. Because when we mix those three colours up, we both, well, I felt a bit disappointed and you thought... It looked like something out of a hoover bag. <laughs> yeah, I thought it just looked like a mucky mess. Yeah. But once it's flocked, it's really attractive. Beautiful, isn't it? It takes on a different life altogether. Mm, and I think that would um, make a lovely covering for like an animal. Mm-hmm. Uh, animal fur, like maybe on the backs of ears, or yeah, even on a muzzle, or on a paw pad. Mm -hmm. You know the bits between the yeah, yeah. It's very animal-like in its uh, final colour, and it's very, very attractive. Yeah, so really pleased with that one. So I think I'll put some of that through the sieve again and see what it's like mixed with this. Okay. an interesting colour. It's made like a rust colour. Mm. So that is actually four different colours mixed together. Mm. So again, I'm really pleased with the result. And again, I'd say that would make a, a nice fur covering for an animal. Mm. So, four colours there and uh, another success. Yeah. So, this is going to be interesting because this is the first time um, I've looked at any four millimetre blocks. They've not mixed quite as well as the smaller part uh, fibres, which is what you would expect, I suppose. So basically, the four millimetre didn't work. That was the result of it. Uh, strange. The fibres were barely attracted to it and they were flying everywhere else. It's uh, something that I'm looking into at the moment. So you've experimented with the cream 
Paul Melamita and you managed to get some on this wood. How did you do that, Paul? Different setup. Um, I use the um, gun that I've made, which is positively charged, and the, the fibres come out of a mesh and uh, hold it over the work and shake it like, like you would do a salt and pepper pot over your, right. over your lunch. So obviously we need to do some more experimentation with four millimetre fibres and yes, how to flock with them. Mm. So this next flock that I'm going to mix is two millimetre flock. So again, that hasn't thoroughly mixed up. Yeah, interesting ones because it's um, So what happened with this was the white covered, but the brown didn't. And I think what was going on was I was supposed to have two mini, two millimetre white flock, but I, I think they've sent me one millimetre. So is that a combination of one millimetre and two millimetre fibres yes, mixed together? Yes, it certainly looks like it. And the one millimetre fibres were attracted up first. And the two millimetre ones, the brown ones, some of those were attracted up, but they're getting quite sparse, aren't they? Yeah, so you need that different method again for working with two millimetre. But it does look like the white one millimetre is filling in between the two mm, millimetre. Which is interesting it is, isn't it? Yeah. in itself. So next I'm going to go back to one millimetre and I'm going to mix this yellow and orange. I was really, really pleased with the result of this. I think that it very attractive. It's like more attractive than the yellow by itself and more attractive than the orange by itself. And I think we'll actually use this combination to flock socks. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, it's a nice um, sort of... A, a blend. Blend. Tangerine, would you say? Mm. Um, it's also got a sort of variation depending on how the light catches it. Mm, really yeah. attractive Particularly again. Nice and I think the final one I'll try, sticking with the one millimetre flock, is the dark brown and the yellow. What do you think of that shape, Paul? Sort of an earthy green colour, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, strange how it's gone to such a green colour, isn't yeah. it? Now, you particularly like this one, don't you, Paul? Gorgeous. That one looked green when it was mixed up. It was another one where I was disappointed and I thought it just looked green. It doesn't look green at all. It's dark brown with this these little flecks of um, yellow. It reminds me of suede shoes. <laughs> Very animal. So that was a successful experiment, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah, it was and fascinating as well. So in the next video, I'm going to be using some of these blended flocks, different coloured blends to flock the two muzzles I've got, this one and the other one that's not got chalks on. Okay. And of course in a future video we'll be exploring using longer flocks. Yes, when we've sorted out how to do it properly. But that's it for this video folks. Thanks for watching as always and see you next time.